Hello to everyone. This is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV, and I am Benjamin Pogosian. This week we will discuss two issues. First, the visit of Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov to Armenia, and second, we will speak a little bit about the epopeia of Finland and Sweden accession to NATO and Turkish objections on that. So, in the previous week, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov visited Armenia and spent approximately 48 hours in Yerevan. Prior to visit to Yerevan, Lavrov was in Ankara. In Yerevan, Lavrov met with his Armenian counterpart, Ararat Mirzoyan, with Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, and also he participated in the CSTO summit of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs. First of all, let's discuss the bilateral issues. Definitely, the number one topic, which Mr. Lavrov discussed in Yerevan, it was the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, Armenia-Azerbaijan relations. We heard a lot of usual things from Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Russia supports Armenia-Azerbaijan normalization. Russia supports the launch of border delimitation and demarcation process. And Russia definitely supports the restoration of communications. Mr. Lavrov reiterated that the first full-scale meeting of the Border Delimitation and Demarcation Commission should be take place in Moscow somewhere in the near future. However, the key thing here was Mr. Lavrov's comments when he spoke about restoration of communications. We all know that more than one year, Azerbaijan circulates the notion of so-called Zangezur Corridor. And what Azerbaijan understands on this? Azerbaijanis believe that they will receive or they have to receive the right to pass Sunni region to reach from Azerbaijan to Nakhichevan Autonomous Republic without any Armenian border and customs control. Interestingly, when Armenian authorities were rejecting these claims and were telling Armenian society and also the diaspora that no no discussions within the logic of corridors is going to take place. Armenia will never agree to any corridors. Armenian authorities emphasize one thing. There will be no extraterritorial uh, highways or railways through Armenia. But first of all, let's dig a little bit deeper into this issue. So, Azerbaijan speaks about uh, passing through the Sunni region without Armenian border and custom control procedures while Armenia telling that no, this is not going to happen, no extraterritorial railways or highways will be launched in Tunic region. But interestingly here, there is a contradiction. And never Azerbaijani officials made any statements that Azerbaijan would like to de jure control any highway or railroad, railroad in the Tunic province. So from Azerbaijani perspective, the demand to have no border and customs control for Azerbaijani citizens and goods when they will pass through Sunik. This no customs and no border control does not mean extraterritorial highways or railways. So from Azerbaijani point of view, they never demanded any extraterritorial highways and railways from Armenia. So in this context, when we hear from the Armenian authorities that no corridor is going to happen because Armenia will never agree on anything extraterritorial. Uh, there is a little bit confusion because, again, from Azerbaijani point of view, Zangezur corridor does not mean that the corridor itself will be under the Uri Azerbaijani control, that any highway or railroad which will pass through Sunik region will be under the Uri Azerbaijani control. Azerbaijan tells that, of course, this should be the Uri under Armenian control. No one argues. Against this, simply we want to have no border and customs control procedures for Azerbaijani citizens and for Azerbaijani goods. So in this case, when Armenian authorities were rejecting the notion of Zangezur corridor, telling that they will never agree for any extraterritorial concessions to Azerbaijan, uh, we should understand that here there was a little bit discrepancies because from Azerbaijani point of view, Zangezur corridor does not mean any extraterritorial claims which from another hand means that theoretically it's possible to satisfy Azerbaijani demands regarding the no border and customs Armenian control in Sunik and simultaneously uh, satisfy Armenian requirements or Armenian demands that uh, there should be no extraterritorial corridor 
passing through the territory of Armenia. And here, when uh, Mr. Lavrov discussed uh, this issue in Yerevan, during his press conference, he used a very interesting phrase. He said that definitely no extraterritorial discussions are on the way, supporting Armenia's government vision, but also he added that the simplified procedure will be launched for Azerbaijani goods and Azerbaijani citizens to pass uh, from Azerbaijan to Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic via uh, the Sunik. So the key here to understand, or try to understand, what this simplified procedure mean. If simplified transit procedures de facto will mean that Armenia will have no border and customs control, so from Azerbaijani perspective, uh, this will mean that Zangotor Corridor has been launched. But interestingly, from Armenian government perspective, government may say that, look, citizens, I always tell you that no extraterritorial uh, corridor will be established in Armenia, and look, there is no extraterritorial corridors. Armenian government, the URE controls both highway and railway, which connects, which or which will connect Azerbaijan to Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic via Sunik province. So, we should carefully follow what will happen, and definitely we need more details to understand what these simplified transit procedures mean. Because if actually they mean no Armenian border and customs control, then from Azerbaijani point of view, it will mean that Armenian government gave its consent to establish the Zangezur Corridor. Again, while speaking about Zangezur Corridor, Azerbaijan never said anything about any extraterritorial highways or railways in Sunik. Azerbaijan never spoke about the URE controlling any highway or railway in Sunik territory. And the second big issue is to understand whatever regime will be established in Sunik for Azerbaijani goods and citizens who will pass through the Sunik region to connect with Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic, we should understand, will the same regime or same procedures be launched, for example, for Armenian goods and Armenian citizens who will use Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic territory to reach Islamic Republic of Iran? So, if theoretically Azerbaijan will agree that no Azerbaijani border and customs control is going to happen while Armenians will pass Armenian Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic border and then Nakhijewan Autonomous Republic Iran border, then we may say that at least we have some equal attitude uh, both for Armenia and Azerbaijan. But in any case, again, if there will be no border and customs control implemented by the Armenian side, we will have a very interesting situation when Azerbaijani government will claim and rightfully will claim that, look, I always I was speaking about Zangezur Corridor. I always was speaking that Zangezur Corridor means no Armenian borders and custom control, and I reached my goal. So Zangezur Corridor is established. While Armenian government may say that when I was telling that Armenian government would never accept any corridors, I always meant that Armenian government would never accept any extraterritorial claims, and Armenian government will never allow that any highway or railway on Sunik uh, region will be under the de jure Azerbaijani control. And we will have interesting situation when Azerbaijan will say yes, Zangezur Corridor was established, while the Armenian government will continue to argue that no, this is not the Zangezur Corridor. So let's see what will happen then. And the second issue, let's briefly touch about the situation regarding the Finland and Sweden accession talks and accession protests to NATO. Obviously, mm, Turkey surprised many by vehemently opposing this process, and some uh, thought that this is a simply bargaining from Turkey's side and uh, closer to the late June 2022 NATO summit, that Turkey will somehow drop off its objections and in this NATO summit, Finland and Sweden will become NATO members. But this was not the case. Uh, there were several meetings, some delegations arrived in Turkey from Finland and Sweden, but Turkey presented quite long um, demands, requirements, up to 10 points, and both to Finland and Sweden. And these are very significant and very tough points. Even Turkey demands the resignation of Sweden defense minister, because Turkey claims that uh, Sweden's Ministry of Defense supports uh, terrorism. The situation in Sweden is really interesting, because currently in Sweden they have minority government, and government uh, can keep its position only based on one vote of Kurdish MP, the woman uh, who was former member of Kurdish guerrilla. 
and definitely she is uh, arguing that no, Sweden should not give up to Turkey's any concessions and all demands of Turkey should be rejected. While from Turkish perspective, the fact that the Swedish MP is a former Kurdish guerrilla fighter, it's another proof that Sweden is supporting Kurdish terrorism. So due to all these uh, developments, uh, Turkey firmly says that no, there will be no agreement from Turkish side for Sweden and NATO, uh, Finland to become NATO members, at least in the upcoming NATO summit. And interestingly, even NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg recently made a very interesting statement that most probably we have to accept that Sweden and Finland will not become NATO members in this upcoming summit. But uh, NATO Secretary General also said that, okay, this was not our goal, so it does not mean that if Sweden and Finland are not going to become a NATO members in upcoming summit, then the process is stalled. However, all these uh, issues regarding the Sweden and Finland's uh, potential accessions to NATO uh, shows us how emboldened Turkey has become under the Erdogan rule. Just uh, even uh, in the early Erdogan period, like early 2000s, it was simply unimaginable to um, even uh, think that Turkey will stop the Sweden and Finland NATO's membership bid, especially given the current war, de facto war between the United States and Russia, the current war in Ukraine. It was simply impossible to believe that President Erdogan, then Prime Minister Erdogan, or Turkey in general, uh, would allow itself to simply say no to the United States and to say no to other NATO uh, members in the very crucial point for NATO because the, there is a momentum in Finland and Sweden to j join NATO and also there is a no guarantee that for example this minority government in Sweden uh, which existence depends on this one vote of this former Kurdish guerrilla member woman will not be collapsed. In that case Sweden will have to pass through early parliamentary elections and no one can guarantee the results. So by firmly stopping the Finland and Sweden membership into NATO as far as all his demands are not met, and again these demands are very tough to extradite, uh, extradite uh, some uh, uh, Kurdish community leaders from both Finland and Sweden, and even the demand for the resignation of Sweden defense minister, this all shows up that Turkey is really emboldened and Turkey believes, or President Erdogan believes, that he is able to say no to the United States regarding the NATO membership for very crucial time for NATO. Of course, we should not also forget that now everything in Turkey is connected to the upcoming presidential and parliamentary elections. They will take place in June 2023, uh, though uh, some experts don't exclude that Erdogan will call early presidential elections in November 2022. And President Erdogan knows very well that if he loses these elections, most probably he and his inner circle will end in jail. So for Erdogan, this is a really issue of decent life. And President Erdogan will do everything to win and also he will use this Finland and Sweden rhetoric to show how he was able and how he was successful to make Turkey one of the regional great powers. Because the current uh, President Erdogan's uh, vision for Turkey is a regional hegemon and the country which after becoming regional hegemon will even compete for becoming one of the great powers in this post-unipolar world. So President Erdogan will do everything to use this situation regarding Finland and Sweden accession to NATO to send clear message to Turkish electorate that look, just 20-25 years ago Turkey was a mere a junior brother of the United States and we were simply uh, where we were pushing the US interests in different areas Middle East, uh, Central Asia, South Caucasus, Western Balkans, Northern Africa no independent foreign policy and no one takes uh, Turkey seriously but now as a result of my 20 years of rule and Erdogan's party first won the parliamentary elections back in November 2002 Erdogan may say, look, I transformed Turkey from being uh, simply junior partner or even junior ally for the United States with no ambitions, with no independent foreign policy. I transformed Turkey into a real regional superpower. So let's see, it's very in interesting, but one thing is clear, that most probably Sweden and Finland are not going to become full NATO members in the upcoming NATO summit. 
This is all for today, and we will meet soon. Thank you. Bye.